Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Jizz Talking for a Sunday Night. It is April 2nd. I hope nobody fell for an April Fool's jokes yesterday. Uh, I do know in, in uh, Michigan they got like 20 inches of snow. That was no fooling. But anyway, that uh, was quite a deal up there. Anyway, with us today is our good friend Marvel Lee. Marvel Lee, how are we doing today? I'm great. How are you? We're doing good. It's so great to see you. I have seen you on Facebook. Uh, I think we've been Facebook friends, good God, for about two or three years. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, fine. And, and, and I said, well, Marvel Lee, would you like to be on our show? Well, yes, you finally asked me. So anyway, we're glad to see you here. <laughs> And uh, it looks like you're just relaxing and dressed in your Sunday best. Oh, yes. Yes. Make sure that I have my Sunday best on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes, that is very, very nice. Uh, Marvely, let's go back in time a little bit. How did, where, when, what year did you get started and how, what were the situations that led up to getting started? Um, I started in, well, I started in porn, I guess, in 2020. Yeah, 2020. Um, <laughs> or I started as a cam model. Okay. And, you know, then the pandemic hit and I already wasn't getting laid. And I was like, man, I ought to do porn. At least then I'd be getting laid. So I made a profile on one of those websites and, um, I got a bunch of offers, but I was really hesitant at first. I was kind of scared that I'd be human trafficked or, you know, you hear stories about girls who went to California and never came back, that kind of thing. So I was really hesitant at first. Um, finally, I talked to Will Bang um, and... He convinced me to do my first shoot. <laughs> and we, well, we actually did a script that I wrote for the first one, which was really cool. Um, it was um, the lazy French maid where, you know, I'm in my French maid outfit and I just, I'm laid up eating potato chips, watching TV, smoking, got my weed. You know, and he comes in and he's like, what are you doing? And the whole time in, I'm speaking French. And my French isn't that good, um, but Google Translate is. <laughs> so, um, you know, he punishes me for being a bad, lazy French maid. And at the end of it, after I get him off, I look up in French and I say, so do I get to keep my job? And he says, oh, yeah. And I jump up out of the bed and in English. I say, OK, I'll see you later and just walk out. So at that point, he realized he's been bamboozled. <laughs> well, that's cute. I mean, that takes a lot of uh, of your first thing to write and write it in with such detail like that. That's just. That's stunning to me that, you you know, I would imagine somebody's first go out of the shoot might be just, okay, I'm here and I'm there and I'm here and I'm there and <laughs> boom, it's done. But no, you actually put some thought into that. Well, I had been doing the Lazy French Maid character for cam shows and I kind of had a script written for those. And that also kind of helped me with, you know, later scripts for actual videos. Um, and then... Um, the Netflix and chill video is just me trying to prove a point to Will because we've been arguing over lighting. <laughs> and it came out pretty well. Um, but we've done a lot of vids together. And I've done a lot of vids with other people, too. Um, looking forward to releasing some uh, scenes that I did with um, Mr. Big D. Um, a couple of weeks ago in Florida. So is that where you were dressed up like a, a police officer? There's a police officer involved. I saw one of those. Um I don't have a police officer one. Oh. I do a lot of characters though. I do a Miss Lee sex ed class. Um I do um like Miss Lee's real estate agency because that always seems to go over well. And um 
Then I have the French maid and the naughty nurse. Um, I've done Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> that dress is so uncomfortable, though. <laughs> I don't really like that one. And I don't think I'm a great redhead. <laughs> well, luckily, the dress comes off eventually. Yes, yes. And so does the wig. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, that's what, one of those characters I'm not ashamed to pull the wig off at some point. <laughs> what uh, what cam sites are you on, or were you on? I know um, you're still there. I've seemed to have had a little problems with Chatterbait recently. Um, as far as I know, that I just felt like I was shadow banned, and maybe I'm not. But they claim that they don't do that. Whatever. So I've been trying to focus more on mini bits. Um, and hopefully I'll be on live tomorrow, um, probably around noon. <laughs> um, so that'll be great. Okay. Do you, is this your full-time job now, or do you have another, you work at the hardware store, or, or is this your full-time? Um, well... <laughs> Mostly, this is it. <laughs> Good. Where did you work um, when you were uh, before this? Uh, what line of work were you in? I was an art teacher for little kids <laughs> at one point. Um, I worked a lot of restaurant jobs, um, like as management jobs. Um, I think I've been to all the through all the major fast food chains at some point when I was younger. Sure. <laughs> have, you ever um, been to, have you ever been to Iowa? I have. Well, that was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know there's a, there's a group that films in Iowa called Private Society. If you ever... Yes, I shot you, with them. Okay, well, if you ever go back, let me know because um, I'm a couple hours away, but I can buzz down there and get some pictures. We oh, can sign and cool. take some pictures and, and have a fun day. Awesome. So if you ever... If you ever do that again, let me know and I'll, I'll buzz down. Right. And look at some, yeah. Make it, well, make when it. I both shot with them um, last year. Okay. We'll get you some that was, money coming in. That was a crazy experience. <laughs> you know, it, uh, they put you at the, at the Super 8, and it's, but it's right next door to the Walmart. So you can always buzz over to the Walmart and, and right. get, get whatever you need. But I don't think they've, I don't think they've got Uber or Lyft and, and, uh, so you kind of got to walk. Yeah, I didn't find any. And we got there like super late um, and shot and then got back to the hotels really late. <laughs> um, and then, well, I shot three scenes for them. Okay. So, and we did those in two days. We all shot two. <laughs> So it was it was basically a total of five scenes in two days. Yeah. I know the I know the guy back from uh he used to be a radio guy back in, in the day and, and I used to be as well. So I knew I knew of him and he says, Oh yeah, I remember you. Uh so anyway, hey, in honor of Cartrell's microphone working today, we're gonna let Cartrell go first. Cartrell, go ahead. Yeah, like how did you come up with your name? Um, because I'm a comic book nerd, so it was for, like, Marvel Comics, Stan Lee, and then an old email address I used to have was, like, Marvel Lee Mutant Girl, so I just took it from my email address. <laughs> wow. Because I like the old Marvel comic books, and I still do. Um... Some of my favorite things to portray are the superheroes and do cosplay. Um, I have the Supergirl boots, and I hope I have a Supergirl outfit. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping to do that one soon. <laughs> All right, great. Well, fantastic. Well, there's our answer, how you got your name. That's that's a, that's a kind of a cute story. Eric is with us. Eric, how are you doing tonight? Uh, I'm play. doing great. How about you guys? Good. Hey, question. I, yeah. And I'm a comic book fan as well. Um, <laughs> even on looking at the comic book art, 
stuff that um way they drew up some some of the female superheroes were pretty darn sexy so i think that got the sex wheels rolling pretty early in life um (laughs) but along those lines did you have like an extra sexual gene to you that make you get into this kind of work even as a kid no I, i think i was always hypersexual um I always enjoyed sex more than most girls anyway, I think. And even to the point of, like, as blowjobs, I knew that I was spectacular at getting (laughs) blowjobs. Because, you know, every now and then on Facebook, I'd get a message from somebody, and it'd be like, hey, do you remember me? Uh, You gave me a blowjob, like, 15 years ago, and it was legendary. And it was always the same word. They would always say legendary. Mm. So, yeah, I guess I kind of always knew. <laughs> That's but, pretty cool. Was that at Burger King or McDonald's? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm, probably both. <laughs> probably right. both. Great. Fantastic. We're going to okay. see if Paulo is able to unmute himself here. Paulo, I think Paulo's from Brazil. Paulo, go ahead. Hello, Patrick. How are you? Good. Hello, I'm Brad. Right. I, I has a beautiful woman. Um, I like the diet. I have a has a question. Uh, what movie is recommended in your performance in the screen is totally hot. What's the title? Recommended. So after the meeting, in your performance in the screen is totally hot. Okay. Now, so which which sure one? Of, which so which one of your scenes is the hottest? Because after after he gets done here, he's going to watch it. Which which one of your scenes? <laughs> Netflix and Chill is my favorite. It really is. Um, we did most of the fucking on the couch <laughs> in, in, in my den. <laughs> um, and to get part of the scenes, I moved my kitchen table into the den and put the camera on top of the kitchen table pointed down <laughs> so that I could get part of the shots that we wanted for that vid. And it, it is my favorite. It is. And, and where do we find that at? And what where was um, where? it is on my mini bids. It's marvelly.minibids.com. Okay. All right. I'll write that down so we get that and <laughs> uh, and we can link to it later. Hey, and Eric, you can Franco's always find us. links to my work from my Twitter, which is at marvellyxxx. Okay, we'll certainly include that too in the in the follow up as well. Erica Ryko's with us. Erica, how are you doing tonight? Um, a little tired. Um, yeah, I, I have week. A, I've had a big two weeks, and nice to meet you, Marvin Lee. By the way, I don't want to dominate too much, but um, uh, it's it's been a, it's been one of these you 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 really fucking won't believe it type of things, and um, I I did another studio shoot yesterday and the male talent noodled has that ever happened to you on yeah, a set? it has it's yeah. it's really hard not to take that um to heart when that happens a lot of times i've noticed like i did a shoot with one guy who when the camera was on and the lights were on he was limp as could be but if you turn the lights off and he thought the camera was off, he was rock hard. And I think his his penis was just camera shy. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, because I'll, I'll tell you what happened. I mean, you, you know, in the studio shoot, um, uh, you know, after he just said, hey, you, you know, everything went well the first three parts of it because there's a storyline to it. And right. um you know the stills in it even the last scene there was another girl involved and the Oops. 
I'll tell you what, Erica, you're Girl, really cutting out bad. Girl and and which is still okay. Let me try it again. I've I've been having a few problems. All right. Or you can restart your phone and come back. Sometimes that works. Yeah, you know, you know, let me sign out because this is an interesting story. I don't want to take uh, take up too much, and right. maybe even after the show. Hold on, let me resign. Okay. All right. Give me we'll, a second. We'll be here. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anyway, uh, she's always having interesting stories. That's that's the thing, <laughs> that's the thing about uh, uh, about Erica Ryko is she uh, is is so interesting. We hung out. Uh, in uh, LA uh, back in January. And of course, uh, she's never been able to tell a short story yet. <laughs> <laughs> short stories just do not happen. So anyway, we'll see if Erica can come, come back and join us for her quickie story about the guy with the limp noodle. And that's, I, I was on, I don't know, Marvel, have you have you been on with Jiggy Jaguar yet? haven't we've talked okay, about it a couple of times but i actually haven't been able to actually get there yet okay so he's um, a pretty cool guy yeah yeah he's he's funny and today we were talking about you know uh all my you know he says when you come back from exotica what are some things you hear i said well first of all i hear uh a lot of whispers of these women saying what's it take to be on only fans and and stuff like that and, <laughs> Then I got all my guy friends saying, yeah, I could fuck that. I could fuck that. Yeah, yeah, no problem for me. And it's not really the truth. I mean, it's, um, I can't remember who said it was, uh, if you want to, if you want to try your hand at an adult porn career for a male, you just invite 25 of your best friends over and uh, <laughs> masturbate in front of them while everybody's waiting for lunch. And, uh, <laughs> that's that's uh that's, that's and you know I have to add, it. it's um, it's hard when there's a lot of start and stop for a guy to to stay hard and there is a lot of start and stop in porn and i mean it's not really about that guy actually getting his nut it's more about making a video that will get attention so sometimes you know I've told guys, okay, if you really feel like you need to come right now, we'll, we'll just go to that, and then I'll cut that in the editing back to the end of the video. <laughs> but, you know, you have to perform the second time then, and that's a lot more pressure, too. <laughs> so. Okay, Erica, go ahead with your story real quick. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, that's the other thing, because even on set yesterday, we are talking about, like, like the male talent that New, he even took a Cialis, which is, you know, and, um, but, you know, there's guys that have been on Caver Jack, you know, they get the injections. Uh, I, don't, I, I think, yeah. you know, when you get to the studio level or even, even, you know, even, even, you know, talents that are shooting for only fans, whatever, man, they're, they're on something and, you know, who knows, you know, it's, uh, you, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to lose sleep over, oh, because this is the first time, you know, somebody went limp dick or whatever, but, you know, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but he was really worried that he was really worried that his agent was going to, was going to uh, rip him a new one. And who knows, you know, I mean, he was telling me before the shoot, how producers are such dicks, you know, when that, you know, he went, um, you know, it was one of the um, stepson, you know, one of those kind of things, you know, the milk thing. Um, I'll just say that. But, yeah, it was. Yeah, the, I'll, I'll tell you, Patrick, the last two weeks have been a fucking roller coaster, man. I'll have to tell you off camera, you know, I don't want to take up too much time. But, yeah. Well, then then I heard your car broke down and then you had to get laid over that. Oh, God, man. I got a screenplay, but man, I, I, Corlin had her, and we, we had this fast mansion and I've, and, and I have some great scenes that I shot. I shot two scenes, um, Dom with Veronica Vaughn and one interracial scene. So we're, I have to revamp my only fans. As you know, you, you constantly have to, to be putting it out and thing and, and i'm not going to go to chicago because i may be shooting at the same time okay you know i have other and my other business uh i have some dates here where i have to be here in la and 
If I don't do that, man, I will do New Jersey. I, I, I promise, you know, I'm going to do some of these exoticas. It just, um, um, and right now, you know, not many people are here right now. So I got to right. tend to a lot of things. So. Oh, Hall of I Fame. In the time. There you go. <laughs> Hall of Fame, uh, Avian Hall of Famer, Richard Pacheco is with us. Richard, how you doing? Okay, guys. Good to be here. Sorry I'm late. Well, what can you, uh, what can you comment on, on the penis problem? <laughs> I had every one of them more than once. I wrote a whole book about it. If you read my my biography, my autobiography, Hindsight, Patrick, yeah, thank you. Um, I go through, um, I got work in the beginning. I was active from the mid-70s to the mid-80s. There was no Viagra. There was no Levitra. There was no Cialis. There was trial by ordeal. Uh, you either got it or you didn't get it. Um, and I was not an exhibitionist. And I was largely terrified <laughs> of sex in front of people. Master, I didn't realize when I started out that um, if you had told me that it was like masturbating in front of other people, I would have never been in the business. Uh, never. Because masturbation is something I did behind a locked door. Uh, it was not something I wanted to look into a camera lens and do. It was the most humiliating thing I could imagine, and I couldn't function at all. Um, so I was lucky enough that I came along at a time when they actually wanted actors uh, who could do sex. And it wasn't enough just to be able to do sex. Although there were those kind of parts still, but they wanted actors who could have sex. So I kept getting hired because I'm a good actor. And uh, they said, eventually you'll learn how when you stop being an idiot and being afraid. Um, and it, that's what happened. Uh, I, I failed so many times in the first 10, 15 scenes that it became like, well, what else can I know how to fail now? <laughs> I know what that feels like. And it is the worst feeling on earth because when you're sitting there with a beautiful woman laying there wide open saying, honey, you know, sweetheart, dear, and trying their best to get you aroused and you're just stuck in fear um, and nothing you can do about it. So um, I decided I failed so much. Well, maybe I, maybe that's enough failing. Maybe I can learn how to do this. And I met a guy named John Seaman. Now, John Seaman was a major actor. And that was his actual name. He was a guy who was famous for always standing in for the schmucks like me that couldn't get it up. And he could get it up in an earthquake. And he took pity on me because most of the guys didn't want to help the guys. That was your competition for parts. So they weren't going to help you. Live and let die is what the, the, the deal was between the male actors. Go fuck yourself. Um, but John was so secure in who he was as a performer that he would take, he took time to say, here's what he saw when he saw me. He saw someone that was always trying to please the director. And he says, you need to understand something. When it's time for your sex scene, you stop pleasing everybody else. Because if you can't please yourself, you're not going to get hard. If you can please yourself, then you got half a chance. So the director, if, he, if you don't get hard, he doesn't have a scene anyway. So he's not going to give you grief if you tell him what you need. And Sometimes for me, it was like, I mean, I had sex with some women that didn't even say hello to me when I got on the set. It was just like I was ignored. When you're new, you're nobody. And it's a low, miserable place. Um, and I don't have, I don't do well with women don't say hello to me about having sex with them. It's just not arousing to me. Um, so uh, and also there were some guys I had a, one still photographer always making fun of me and uh like one, one time I showed up to work and whom I worked with, they tell me the girl's name. I go looking for her because I tried to become friends with the women before the sex scene because I did well if I had a friend and I could get somebody who wanted to be with me. A lot of women didn't want to be with me. Um, okay, that's, their, that's fine. But let's not try to make it work then. Let me find somebody who would like to be with me. And you start learning these things as you go through the humiliations. And I went through them all. And eventually learned how to do it and had a nice long 10 year run. And now I'm the smallest cock to ever hit the big time. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough for me. Go ahead. Pat. All right. All right. Uh, Marvely, what are some projects in the upcoming uh, months or years that you want to accomplish and, and uh, see to fruition? Um, 
Well, one of my uh, studio ideas is going to be the unknown porn, porn star. Um, it's going to be um, kind of a recurring series. Um, back in the 80s, I think there was a comic who was like the unknown comic and wore a bag on his head. Yeah. And there are a ton of guys who want to fuck, but all they want is POV because they don't want to show their face. And I'm just thinking, you know, that's really disrespectful. I'm just going to throw a bag on their head. Um, <laughs> they can be disrespectful to me. I can throw it back a little. <laughs> not, um, like they'd put a bread, not like they'd put a plastic bread sack over my head and I'd suffocate. <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> well you know that's kind of a kink too <laughs> um well i just saw a, a a cosplay uh comic book character that ray ray had just created as gg and she had a cape on and a short little midriff shirt and it was uh a gg stood for gangbang girl so she was like a, a superhero <laughs> there too so and and that's ray ray cool. really sets up some uh, elaborate uh, uh, productions, and she she won't stay necessarily in the hotel at Exotica. She'll rent an Airbnb to have the whole place done up, and then right. have that. So yeah, I hate shooting in hotels. Um, it always looks like a hotel, yeah. always. And in an Airbnb, you have the whole place to shoot. Unless they figure out that you're shooting porn there. And then Airbnb will ban your ass. <laughs> um, will ban knows from experience. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, and a couple other stars in the business were pointing out that they were discriminated against uh, from renting Airbnbs on that premise as well, too. But, you know, I guess... Um, it's kind of a thin line to walk because if you've got a house that's got certain items on the wall or this or that, um, you know, maybe they don't want it out there to, to show that it can be stolen or whatever. Who knows? What right, happens. right. Rarely would, I can't imagine anybody would be showing the address for where they shot. Right, right, right. Um, so, I mean, if you're renting out a home, to me, you're renting it out for whatever you know, people do all kinds of weird things. <laughs> right. you know, uh, we have a, a, a old time jail here in town, and uh, it's it's from the 1800s. It used to be our sheriff's. It used to be our sheriff's office and and jail. And uh, the unique thing about it is that it has the first all locking system where you pull the lever down and it locks all the cells. That was like a first invention of its kind back in the 1800s, and it's the only working one in the state of Iowa right now. Oh. Well, um, it's an Airbnb. They turn it into an Airbnb, and they do have, uh, when nobody's there, they do have some kinky parties there and some jail cell stuff, and we're going to examine you for contraband things and blah, blah, right. blah. And so we had a couple people in town raising hell. Uh, they're having sex in that place. Well, and haven't you ever rented a motel room and had sex in a motel? It's the same difference. Same uh, just because you're going to sleep on a steel cot uh, and have a old army blanket, it's still a rental. I mean, right. you know, so anyway, um, yeah. people losing their shit, and I just hate it. And I, I hate that they do that because they're being discriminatory against this guy who's just trying to make some money. So anyway, but they, they play dress up and... They're all in their sheriff's outfits, and and uh, they'll arrest you. They'll put you in handcuffs, and and they'll take you in. And that sounds uh, like fun. <laughs> it's a big role play thing. So when, whenever you come to Iowa, Marvel, you'll have to go to the jail, and and uh, <laughs> I'll have to get in contact with private society again. <laughs> get, your, get your mug shot taken and your fingerprints taken, and then and uh, go from there. So Charles was here for a second ago, but he got up and must have. Got himself a drink of water or something, but uh, I, uh, Erica, I just invited Sherry to come in the room, but I don't think she'll be in. So anyway, I, I, told, <laughs> I told her you had an yeah. active, I told her you had an active week and you ran out of gas and 
There's yeah. only, one way, only one way to get more gas. And that was a definitely. Um, <laughs> and um, I, I just lost my train of thought, what I was going to, um, what I was going to say, it was, um, I don't know. Anyway, all right. it'll, it'll, it'll come back in the most inappropriate times. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Charles is with us. Charles, how are you doing tonight? I'll get you unmuted here. I'm good. Um, it was an exhaustingly busy weekend. I'm really tired. I'm glad to be here. I'm gl so glad to be here. Um, I'm sorry I missed like the first 15 or 20 minutes. Um, I don't know what to ask. I'm sorry. I'm like at a word at a loss for words. Um, I know what I'll ask since uh, Chicago. I'm unfortunately not going to the Exotica in Chicago this time. There are other exoticas that I do want to go to, though. And I wanted to find out, Are you? do you go to any of the exoticas and sign autographs and meet your fans and that kind of thing? I did go last year to the one in Chicago, but I can't attend it this year. Um, I will be at the New Jersey Exotica. Okay. All right. I've not been to New Jersey. I've not been to D.C. I've not been to Miami, but I feel like they're sort of on my <laughs> list of things to do. So I've, I've been to New Jersey. I've never been to D.C. And I'm kind of like excited because it's like I want to go and I want to see D.C. But I also want to go to, you know, Exotica. So, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, so, But did, did you have a good time there in Chicago? I love Chicago. It's a great city. I did. Um, as I was telling Patrick earlier, I'm not really good at staying at a booth. Um, I'll. I'll stand there for a few minutes and then I'm wandering around and watching everybody else, um, right. which isn't really what I was supposed to be doing. Um, so, and then <laughs> um, one of the days I was there last year, there was this really short guy. Now I've got on six inch heels and I'm tall. So that makes, with six inch heels, it makes me about six, four. Wow. It makes me tall. Um, yes, it does. And I'm wearing a chain mail bikini where the um, promoters of Exotica had made me come by and put pasties over my nipples because they were showing. And I'm wearing this chain mail bikini and this guy puts his arm around me and I'm being nice and, you know, talking to him. And the next thing I know, he tries to jam his thumb in my asshole. And I'm like, uh, what the fuck? Gonna, I mean, home, you man. know, in, for, in public without consent? What That's the assault fuck? right there. It was all I could do to keep from hitting him. I swear to God it was. I wanted to hit him so bad, but I didn't. I just made it really clear you can't do that. <laughs> he should have been banned instantly. That, that was my, yeah. No room for that bullshit. And, and, and Ron was... I, 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 Admire your <laughs> restraint because I think if I had been in your place, I think I would have, you know, decked the. I would have decked the guy. I really, you know. Well, being you know, naked and all, I didn't really want to touch my luck. I didn't if know the, how. If the performance <laughs> is okay, then it's okay. But it's like you know, there are boundaries, and it's like you should not go beyond those boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I, I was pretty shocked. <laughs> I would be too. Now, did That's you make horrible. any, uh, did you do any scenes back at the hotel at all or, or have anything like that? Going um, on? Yeah, well, on that Sunday, um, I actually skipped the Exotica Sunday and I shot with Peach Fuzz. Um, she's a younger African-American girl. I think she's probably 23 or 24. She was a lot of fun. A I lot just, of fun. I just skipped it for that too, I guess. <laughs> hey, don't forget, uh, next week we'll be talking with our good friend Tad Pohl, who'll be, uh, he was at Exotica last year and he was at the A, at the X3 event in uh, Hollywood. And I, I felt so bad for him at the X3 because he just kept walking around with this banner. I was supposed to be set up behind him, but there was no room anywhere for his shit. And um, oh. like, like I said, there, like uh, Erica knows too, that was just a cluster anyway. But uh, anyway, a poor guy kind of just got shuffled around. And I think he was one of the major sponsors. And now I, I do see at Exotica, he's kind of 
shuffled off to the corner too. He he had a big booth last year right next to ours. That was really a good booth. And this time he's got kind of just a, a little a smaller booth kind of back in the corner by the men's room. You know, that's how you, you know, someone asked me the other day, or asked me last year, where were the bathrooms? I see, I see you keep walking that way until you smell piss. And you'll find <laughs> <laughs> Marley, you went last year. Did you smell what those bathrooms smelled like? I did not. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you're lucky because they just, I mean, I, I, I smell, <laughs> I, I, to be fair, I don't smell as bad as, <laughs> and uh, so. Yeah. I think I managed to avoid the bathrooms. I don't know how I did that. Maybe I went at the hotel and didn't have to go when we were there. <laughs> But I somehow managed to avoid the bathrooms there. I remember walking uh, Lynn LeMay to the bathroom, and then she went for a, we went for a smoke, and that was kind of it. But I don't remember going into the bathrooms. Oh, man. Uh, I know well, that. One has a, a urine fetish, and then they'd be in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. All right, all right. Yeah, they had, uh, but anyway, yeah, I think that uh, uh, Kelly Richards blew somebody in the bathroom, but uh, I, I don't know if it stunk or not. But anyway. Uh, I don't think at that point in time she cares. <laughs> it's not my finish. Not, not my deal. No, no, not a piss guy. So but anyway. <laughs> let's go. Uh, let's go back around the horn. Cartrell is with us again. Cartrell, you have a uh, unmute yourself and have a question for Marvel Lee. Um. Yeah. Like. Uh, it, uh, would you ever like shoot with like fifty plus milfs? Absolutely, uh, I do all the time. I mean, you mean like fifty year year old, or you mean like with more than fifty people? Oh wait. Oh. <laughs> I, I think you mean, yeah, no. yeah. I do all the time. I shoot with younger guys and older guys. Oh, good. I know that that's one thing that tadpole is going to uh, promote next week. Uh, they're wanting to do a, a hundred guy gangbang with Rebel Rider, and uh, they're going to be uh, uh, looking for all comers. And I know they did wow. that. They did something like that last year. They had a big orgy scene that they recorded, and I saw guys walking in that were my size and bigger. And hell, I thought it was a hot wing eating contest. I thought, hey, <laughs> hot wings in there? and uh, but it, uh, they were eating something different. So anyway, <laughs> uh, I told Herschel about the hundred man gangbang. He says I wouldn't want to be number two or number ninety nine. I hate this. I, <laughs> this was his kryptonite. That's what he said. So, anyway, but uh, I yeah, haven't so done any gangbang scenes. You say what, um, Marley? I haven't done any gangbang scenes, but I've talked with Cat Bull in the past about doing them. He, he's he's such a um, unassuming. You, you look at him and you don't really make the connection, but you know, uh, from what I understand, he really treats his, his people right. And, uh, it, you know, if you're there, uh, you get in the booth and he's got always got excellent booths. He gives away, uh, panties and he gives away other stuff and hats, you know, you can't ever be without a tadpole hat. And, uh, but anyway, he's a great guy and I don't think he gets enough, uh, uh, recognition. He's got a couple of guys, Sal Shooter with him, the guy with the uh, um, uh, eternal jizz bucket. Uh, he just comes a gallon every time he, he's there. And then Rex Radiation, the man with the bionic cock. Uh, he just got a, a dick implant of some sort. And and so he can go and go and go and go now. So that's kind of some of the talent <laughs> he's got there. We, so. we were talking about that on set yesterday. Yeah. Bionic dick. You know, you can just pop up at any time. <laughs> <laughs> pop up. But does it feel the same? You know, does he get the same sensation that he had before? I've not asked him. He's he's big on eating ass. And so every time you you turn onto his Twitter page, he looks like he's at the you know, at the uh, Royal Fork Buffet because he's always got his <laughs> ass, uh, face buried in somebody's ass. <laughs> <laughs> So, Eric, is back with us. Eric uh, go ahead. Another question for Marvely. A couple things. Number one, I got the uh, implant surgery in, in December. So you can, it's pretty much the same as, as you know, without it. Um, it's still kind of new. It says it takes a while before everything is 100% back to normal. But 
you feel you feel about the same. It does kind of like pop up on its own though sometimes if you move the wrong way because the the pump for it is in your scrotum. So if you sit funny or twist or something, you kind of give yourself a little pump on that. So yeah, yeah, that's you gotta be careful for at work anyway. So <laughs> it's like me in eighth grade math class. Can you come exactly. up on the board? Exactly. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot go to the board at this time. I'll just take the F. Uh Marvelly, for you, I know you you were talking about <laughs> camera angles and stuff like that before in your in your video shoots, but personally, what does it for you? What what feels great for you, and what gets you over the mountain and all that kind of stuff? And are you able to incorporate that in your videos? Yeah, pretty much, I can. Um, of course, I I think you hear a lot of porn stars say that their favorite position is doggy style, and it is my favorite position. It's not necessarily the position I look the best in for a video. <laughs> um, however, it 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 is great, and um, there's been a very rare instance where I've worked with someone that I didn't, you know, have orgasms. So mm -hmm. I don't generally have to fake them or anything like that for a video. I'd say. 99% of the orgasms you see in my videos are real. That's wow. great. Yeah. <laughs> great because of mine aren't. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, now there's been, you know, that why I say 99% is there was, you know, a time where someone was just, you know, stabbing me and I was worried about my internal organs internal organs you know <laughs> yeah do you <laughs> have like a favorite cock size or anything like that um you know eight or nine inches is pretty much about the most that i really want most of the time um as far as that goes a lot smaller i've also gotten off with that um so I, I'd say I'm happy with anywhere from like five to eight, you know, <laughs> just, I think it's more about if you know what you're doing, if you can tell what I like when you get that spot, because I'm vocal, I'll let you know. <laughs> um, I'm in there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Eric, are you going to be at uh, Chicago Exotica? Um, like I said, because I'm probably going to be shooting a uh, company in New York, and um, uh, I have some business that I have to attend to here in L.A. So, um, you know, like I told Lorenzo, um, you know, I'll probably, um, you know, we'll really try to do for New Jersey. Uh, Miami's going to be way too hot in, in July. Yeah. Uh, um so yeah good chance with that um i have some other projects coming up and okay all right what about you eric uh are you going to be in uh in uh, exotica in chicago or any of them this year um probably not um the wife just had a, a surgery so we're we're getting her healthy and all everything like that so we're trying to make it down to hedo next march though for uh the uh, swinger deal. Wow. You and your bionic cock. Exactly. <laughs> Put it to like good a use. robo cock. Try it <laughs> Say what, Erica? Put it to good use. Try it out. I will. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Grab those balls. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, Marvely, have you worked with anybody that you really think, I want to work with them again, and uh, uh, male or female? Oh, yes. Um, many, many people. Jessie Reigns is always going to be one of my favorites. Uh, she's just fabulous. I mean, just really fabulous. Um, Nikki Rebel was fantastic to work with. Um, we actually stayed at his house a couple weeks, twice, maybe three times. <laughs> um, and his wife, uh, Eve, is so nice. Um, gosh, um, I want to say lucky guy. I, I worked with him in, I want to say Pittsburgh. He was great. Um, 
some of the females, Parker, Parker Scott, she was a lot of fun. She is so beautiful. Hot. God, she's hot. <laughs> you know, sometimes I do those girls, girl scenes and I'm like, yeah, I'm really, really into this. And other times, you know, you're just like, yeah. I, and it just depends on what type of girl you're attracted to. But Parker was fun, and Amy Quinn was fucking fantastic. She is such a nice girl. She is just so nice. And I uh, need her so bad. <laughs> she is just, and she's a go getter too. I mean, she doesn't leave any money on the table. She is a. She does not. She does not. <laughs> she shoots everything she can get her hands on. Yeah, I know that. Uh, her husband had, uh, her boyfriend, whoever, had some medical challenges a while back, and I helped her out on a GoFundMe, and and she was pretty emotional. I let her know that, hey, you, you've got people in our group that will help you, and and uh, oh my God, I didn't know that. I I I said I helped her out, yeah. so she appreciated. It. I think he's, I think he's back on the road to recovery, and I think that that danger is out of the way now, but. Uh, yeah, I she, think Sherry Stunts has a GoFundMe now for her medical problems, too. If you want to look on her Twitter, I think it might be the Sherry Stunts. Because sure. um, she's had a lot of issues lately, too. Amy did <laughs> um, Amy did some uh, pussy print cards for Jason. He, uh, uh, he put body paint on her pussy and then pressed a baseball card thing into it. And he's got a print of her flaps on there. And Oh, that's neat. Yeah, yeah. So he does a lot of that. He did uh, nipple prints, kiss prints, uh, nipple prints, and then pussy prints. And so. And oh, he, that's really cool. Yeah. Some, some people just didn't want body paint up inside of them, and others said, "Bring it on!" And Andrew <laughs> said, "Bring it on!" And you know, she. Um, I think Jason did twenty-five cards, and he gives the girl twenty, and then sells five on his own, and then those girls can sell those cards. I think shit. I think Amy sold hers for thirty bucks a pop. And they went right away. So that was instant six hundred bucks in her pocket. So that yeah. was uh, Richard yeah, and Richard is really No, it's a pleasure to get to hear you and see you and learn about and you haven't mentioned a single name that I know. That shows you how far <laughs> how far away and, and long ago all my stuff is. But I, well, I like com I like coming on this show to see what the current version of things are. And who's and then hear the names of who's who's interesting to watch and see and look for. So that's what I'm doing here. I think Richard, they need to re-release your movies. Well, no skin off my nose. I don't know who's you know. <laughs> I, I always keep this one next to the computers up and coming. It's a great one. Uh John Holmes was in it. Uh of course, uh Marilyn Chambers, Herschel Savage, Tom Byron. You know it was a dramatic role for Herschel because he used the word capiche. And so anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, Lisa DeLeo, this was a movie. And, and honest to God, you could take the sex out of it, and it would still be a movie. Uh, uh, that, and that was always kind of the standard back in the day, wasn't it, Richard? If you could you know, take the sex out, you'd, you'd have a, a lighter weight movie, but it was still a movie. Well, you'd, you'd have to do more because the, you, when you take the sex out, you've got like, say the movie runs an hour and 10 minutes, you take the sex out, you have a 20 minute movie. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So you, you, that's not, you could do a, a, a half hour TV show out of that. But, but, but what's interesting about Up and Coming that uh, I'll tell you a story was uh, when John Holmes was taken into custody after the Wonderland murders. He was being held at San Quentin. He wasn't charged with a crime. He was in protective custody because they feared for his life. Uh, he feared for his life. And they were keeping him away from the bad guys who were uh, apparently trying to kill him for his participation in that crime. And also they were trying to get the truth of what the crime was about out of him. Lord only knows that story. Holmes wasn't talking about it. But the day he got out of jail, he came directly to the set where we were shooting that movie. And um, I remember it was a cold day and there were like five of us there. Herschel was there in Marilyn Chambers, Lily Marlene. Um, and um, we were chilled. We were sitting around and huddling in clothes in between every take because uh, we had to be naked. And, um, you know, they take time in between shots. And um, John Holmes was naked and he was not feeling the cold at all. And a cameraman said idly, 
Well, that's what being in prison will do for you. Um, and I did my sex scene with Lily and Marilyn and was done for the day. And I, there was a balcony overlooking the set where the food was all placed. And I went up there to get myself a snack. And while I was up there, I started hearing these screams. And they were incredible screams. And I recognized that it was Marilyn Chambers' voice. And I went and peered over the balcony. And John Holmes, at that point in time, was sticking his Little League baseball bat, uh, which looked like that, um, into Marilyn's asshole. And my God, um, the look on Marilyn's face was incredible. She was like, it was like the sexual equivalent of speaking in tongues. She was screaming, but she wasn't screaming stop. She was into it. And I was just mesmerized watching that face because she was like, like a baby, like a, you know, a newborn baby cries. There's no, it's just out there. Um, she was just, and, and Holmes was ramming away and I'm watching this scene and I had just had an orgasm like 15 minutes earlier. I got another heart on, which doesn't happen to me that quick. Um, and I'm watching the scene and I'm thinking as I'm watching it, this is the most amazing scene I've ever seen ever. And I'm telling people, I mean, I went home and I'm, I started telling everybody, you got to see this movie when it comes out. I've never seen a woman that transfixed ever. Um, during a sex act and especially what that sex act was, which was like John Holmes's dick was real and it was real big. And here she was taking it in her anus. I, that to me, I don't know how she survived that, um, but she did and she loved it. Okay. So six months later, the movie comes out and I see this scene and Oh my God, they missed the shot the whole time. They had the camera locked on the cock and the asshole. So all you're seeing is the meat. There's no emotion in there at all. You, you don't know what the people are doing. All you're looking at is meat. And it's meat for 20 minutes or whatever the thing was. The whole scene was her face. It was all in her face. And they didn't shoot any of that. I was so disappointed because they just, what an opportunity they missed there. Yeah. The, the first part of that scene with her, well, she was a, a country singer, up and coming, up and coming country singer and he was like the garth brooks or well i don't think he was probably like the waylon jennings of uh, of country music the big star and and anyway uh mr strayhorn uh was his name uh in the movie and the first scene is her back on a table and she just opened up her throat and took that took john right down all the way to the balls in her throat oh. <laughs> yeah. Somebody better check and see if she's still alive. Yeah, that was that was the scene that when that was led up to first it was the oral and the anal and then the pop shot. But anyway, um that's what I couldn't believe was laying back on that table the way she took down in her mouth uh this long and thick and uh, all the way to the base. So that was and he just fed it to her just like he was uh here's some pasta, you know, <laughs> just here you go. So <laughs> When uh, that, that day we were working on the movie was actually six months after we had finished shooting the film. And um, I get a call from the producer, Stu Siegel was his name. And it was Miracle Films. And they had the best logo in the business. Their logo was, if it's a good film, it's a miracle. <laughs> 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 Which was really true for any film in porn. Uh, but uh, so he calls me up and. I'm pretty much retired at that point from the business. Uh, my, my first retirement. Um, I just had a, a, my second baby um, and I'm home and it's all very much. We had, I think it was our second child at that point. Um, so I, I'm, I'm in the cocoon of babies and I, I'm not, I'm done with porn. So Stu called me up and saying, they need to add another sex scene to this movie. Uh, and they need, they figured out I need to be in it. And they want me to do a scene with Marilyn Chambers and John Holmes. <laughs> I just started <laughs> laughing. Okay. Here's me and here's John Holmes. <laughs> We're going to do a scene together. You know, after, after she's fucking in the nice day, is it in? <laughs> is, is that what? I, I said, I can't do that, Stu. I, I can't. I, I won't be able to function. I won't work. I can't do it. And he starts, they need you in the scene. Your character's got to be in the scene. And, um, 
And I'm saying, well, I don't have, I don't have that kind of power. I, these are the two number one box office people in all of porn. And I'm just going to be blown out. I know it. And I know if you can see the hammer coming, you duck. And so I ducked and said, no. And they kept adding more money to my salary. And like, wow. And I had, it, when it got up to, I think I got um, $1,200 for one day shoot, which yeah, that nobody gets that except for John Holmes. Um, and so I said, well, okay, all I can do, the worst that can happen is I don't function and I'll fake it. I'll do whatever I have to do. And uh, that's what brought me on the set. And as a, as a, a, a gesture to me, Instead of doing the three-way with John and Marilyn and me, they added two more people to the scene. And one was Lily Marlene, and the second was Herschel Savage. So that took a lot of pressure off me. And then that made it easier for me to function. The sex scene I ended up doing was I got a double blowjob from Marilyn and Lily, which is my favorite flavor because it takes me a long time to come from a blowjob. And more than one woman can put up with. So it was great to have two because when one got tired, the other one could take over and I didn't feel guilty and everything worked and I was done. And then, and then later Marilyn got fucked up the ass by John and that was amazing. I, the rest was history. All right. Well, Marvely, we have really enjoyed our time with you today. I hope you've enjoyed your time with us. Thank you very much. And Everyone then, be on the lookout for my new website coming out. Voodoo, it's going to be VoodooXXX.com. Uh, give that to me again. VoodooXXX.com. Let me write that down. So we have that. Um, so we can include that in the little synopsis we write up. And uh, we'll get that uh, presented to you. Again, uh, next week is Tad Pole. We're going to talk to Tad Pole about what's going on. And his booth at Exotica and what he's going to be doing on there and and uh, all the girls he's going to have in the booth and all the excitement that there will be around Tadpole's booth. I want to get a pair of those, those panties for my wife, too. So <laughs> <laughs> you got priorities, you know. So anyway, again, Marvely, we thank you so much for uh, being with us this uh, this evening. And you have a good night and you have an absolutely stunning career, okay? Thanks. You have all a right. great night. You bet. Don't, Don't be forget sorry, to don't forget to check us out online at www.jizztalking.com. We're also on Twitter <laughs> at, at jizztalking. And don't forget, we do have a, uh, a YouTube channel as well as youtube.com slash at jizztalking. And you'll find all that if you just Google jizztalking. So until next week with Tadpole, we'll see you then. <laughs>